All right, in this video, we are gonna continue our series on how to use the number line as the best way for teaching integer operations. And of course, this video, we're gonna focus on subtraction. Now, the idea with subtraction is we're gonna begin by remembering what we defined addition as. So we defined addition as this idea of, there we are, uh, it's a first change plus the second change equals the sum, which was indicated by the destination of the number line. So addition was defined as first change plus second change equals the sum. And the reason why that's so important is because now we're gonna define subtraction based on addition. So we remember that, oh, if we were gonna do 13 minus five equals what? All right, so we're gonna define a subtraction as, in this case, five plus what equals 13? In which case, subtraction becomes defined, we're gonna define subtraction as that first change plus what gives us the sum or the total, all right? So remember, and I'll do this in blue, that this becomes, that first number is the sum, that second number is the first change. So we're looking for the second change that makes the first change plus the second change first change plus the second change equal the sum. This is a really <laughs> a whole bunch of talking and not a lot of examples. So let's just get right into the examples right now. All right, so I'm gonna move to another page. And uh, in fact, let's take a look at that simple, nice, beautiful uh, problem of 13 minus five equals what? All right, so we're gonna use our number line. And there we go, there's our number line. And remember, our number line does not have to have zero smack dab in the middle. Our zero could be anywhere. So I will put my zero right here. All right, so now the idea is we are going to define that subtraction problem. So I'm gonna move the problem, the arrow, the number line a little, down a little bit. And we're gonna define subtraction as, in this case, five plus what gives me 13. Now, how are we gonna model this on the number line? Well, we're gonna begin by saying we know that our first change, so I'll do it in blue, our first change is going to be a five. And how do we know that? Because it says so right here. <clears throat> we don't know what our second change is going to be but we definitely know we're supposed to end up, so I'll do it in green, we're supposed to end up at 13. So here is our 13. So the question is, what does our second change have to be in order to end up at 13? And so that's the idea. First change, that's the five plus what is our second change, that's that box, has to give us 13, all right? So we're defining the subtraction as an addition problem with a missing add end. Five plus what gives me 13? And of course, in this case, we know that the answer is eight, all right? So our 13 minus five is eight. So that's that's starting with a baby problem, kind of just whole numbers, simple first grade, second grade kind of a problem. So now let's start pushing into uh, the, the kinds of negative numbers that we're expecting our students in middle school to start handling. So let's get going with that. So we'll go to a new slide. Oh, let's do, um, uh, let's do negative 13 minus six equals what? All right, so now we're gonna define that or rewrite that problem as an addition problem with a missing add end. So it's gonna be six plus what gives us negative 13. All right, so now let's draw our number line. Here's our number line right here. 
and oh let's do my little arrows arrow and arrow all right and so our first and it doesn't matter where we have our zero so our first change remember our first change is a six we don't know what our second change is but we know we want to end up at negative 13. so our first change i'll do it in blue our first change is a six right there and we don't know what our second change is but we know we want to end up at negative 13. So I'll put negative 13 right here. There's our negative 13. And we don't know what our second change has to be. Oh, I'll do it in red. We don't know what our second change has to be, but we do know we're supposed to end up. So there's my question mark right there. We don't know what that second change is, but we know it has to end up way down here at negative 13. So how long is that second change going to be? Well, we definitely know it's towards the left. And since it is towards the left, we know that our answer has to be, uh, oopsies, we'll get rid of that line, that stray line. We definitely know it has to be a negative. We know it's a negative. So I'll put the negative right here as well. We know it's a negative because our line is heading to the left. Our second change is heading to the left. So we're gonna allow our students some logic time and some thinking time to kind of use their own intuition to figure out what is that? It's, oh, it's six to the left, plus it's the 13 to the left. Oh, negative six to the left plus 13 to the left that's 19 to the left so our answer is oops i did it again and there it is so our answer is negative 19. that second change was night 19 to the left or negative 19. so that tells us that negative 13 minus 6 is equal to negative 19. Now we are going to gradually t uh, have guide students towards looking for some sort of pattern that, rec that allows us to quickly and efficiently look at that subtraction problem and imagine the number line and immediately jump to the difference, in this case because it's subtraction. But right now, I'm just gonna le leave it be. We're just gonna develop understanding at this point. So I'm going to go to another slide. Oh, let's do um, negative 7 minus thir uh, 14. No, let's do 15. <laughs> negative 7 minus 15. Okay, now remember, what does this mean? It means uh, we're going to define it as 15 plus what? gives us the negative 7. So we're going to use our number line and let's draw a nice big old number line here. All right, and I'll draw my little arrows. Definitely want to remember my arrows. And uh, I'm going to, let's see if we can do this. I am going to move it down a little bit. I think I did it a little too high. So let's Let's move it down a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so we know that our first change is 15, as indicated by the 15. We don't know what our second change is, but we definitely know we want to end up at negative 7. So let's model that. So we know we're going to start at 0. Our first change, and I'll model it in blue, our first change is 15. We don't know what our second change is, but we definitely know we want to end up at negative seven. So we don't know what that second change is. So I'll draw it in, but we don't know what it is. So I'm gonna do an, a question mark. All right. So we're gonna allow our students time to think about what does that second change have to be to get from this 15 right here all the way down 
to that negative 7. Well, we know that we're going to add that 15 to the left plus another 7 to the left. So 15 plus 7 gives us that 23. <laughs> what does it give it? 22 to the left. So our answer becomes negative 22. So in both cases, we can fill in both boxes with our negative 22. Let's do two more problems. Now you'll notice these first two examples, I started with a negative and I subtracted a positive and then I did a negative subtract a positive. I'm going to go, now we're going to kind of reverse it and we're going to do a positive minus a negative and that's on purpose. I'm strategically lining up our problems. So let's do a positive minus a negative. So let's do five minus a negative eight. All right, is equal to what? So remember, we're defining subtraction as an addition problem with a missing add end. So negative eight plus what gives us the five? That's our definition. That's how we're kind of thinking of subtraction. It's a, a subtraction problem is really an addition problem with a missing add end. All right, so we have negative eight plus what gives us five. So we're going to draw our number line right here with our arrows. All right, and so now we're going to model that. All right, so first off, we're going to decide where zero is, and it really doesn't matter. So I'll kind of just put it right. I guess I'd put it in the middle. That's kind of traditional, I suppose. All right, so now we're going to model that first change, which was negative 8. So our first change, negative 8. I'll just pretend that's negative 8 right there. So there's negative 8. We don't know what our second change is going to be, but we know that we end up at 5. So let's model where the 5 is. And oh, I doesn't really matter because it's an empty number line. So there's our five and we know we're supposed to end up at five. So the question is, what does our second change have to be so that we end up at five? Well, our students can definitely see, oh, we're going to move eight to the right. Plus, we're going to move another five to the right. So that's going to be five plus positive eight. So five plus eight is 13. So we can see that we go 13 to the right. So our, our difference is positive 13 or 13 to the right. All right. And now what we're going to be doing is helping our students start to recognize that that second change can be decomposed to result in that traditional um, algorithm for how to subtract negative numbers, but I'm not really going to go into that in this video right now. We may do it in a future video, but right now we're really just helping students develop that, un uh, that number sense of how to recognize uh, the what that problem looks like on a number line and then how to get the answer once they can visualize that. That's the number sense we're looking for. We're not looking for students to just mindlessly use some sort of rule. We really want to develop number sense with our students. So let's do one last example. All right, so uh, a positive minus a negative. Oh, let's do um, 17 minus negative uh, <laughs> six. Okay, God, I don't know why I struggle coming up with a number. Okay, so 17 minus negative six. Now remember, we're going to define that subtraction as first change plus what gives us the result. So in this case, it's going to be negative six plus what gives us 17. So we're going to draw our number line right here. And 
there is our number line. And uh, let's put our zero somewhere. I'm gonna just be different. I'm gonna kind of put it towards the left just to show that it doesn't matter where we put the zero con con in uh, contrast with what a lot of students think. All right, so uh, first change. What's our first change? Our first change is negative six. So it's gonna be six to the left. And we don't know what our second change is, but we definitely know we end up at 17. So I'm going to mark the 17 somewhere. Let's put the 17 right there. And what does that second change have to be in order to get us to the result, which is 17, all right? And so this is where students are gonna use their logic they're gonna say, well, we go to the right, so we definitely know our answer has to be positive. So I'm gonna record our positive in the, in the boxes up there. And what is the magnitude of that positive change? Well, we know we change, we go by six here, plus we go 17 here. Oh, six plus 17 is 23. So our answer is positive. 23, and I don't know how that little line got there. So let's just kind of, there it is, positive 23. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, we're defining subtraction based on addition, whereas for addition was first change plus second change equals the result. Subtraction, we're defining it as first change plus what equals the result. So we are taking that subtraction problem, rewriting it as its related addition problem with a missing add-end, and then allowing the students the opportunity to use logic to figure out what that missing value is, which of course becomes the difference for the subtraction problem. Moving forward, we're going to get into how do we use these number lines to uh, recognize that traditional rule that uh, is so common in the United States for how to subtract integers using a rule. All right, that's coming next.